great. Um, I'll just uh, explain again who's going to talk today. So Sajid's come along from the finance team at Hackney, uh, the children education department to talk about the vouchers available for children on free school meals. And then Nick Brown is going to talk about uh, the range of services that Shelter offers. So Sajid, did you want to um, come in? I know you've got to leave at about quarter past. So um, yeah, do you want to come in now? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, I'm Sajid Patney. I'm the head of finance for children and education here at Hackney. And I'm just going to talk briefly about um, the free school meal voucher scheme um, that is funded from the Household Support Fund grant. So the Household Support Fund grant, if some of you recall, there was some campaigning which um, the footballer Marcus Radford did a few, a few years ago when they were going to stop issuing um, free school meal vouchers um, after the COVID pandemic. Um, so the grants, the government sort of uh, made a commitment to, to to continue the funding and that funding arrives to the council through the household support fund grant. Um, so it's been in, um, we've been receiving it since October 2021. The funding for it has only actually been um, renewed every six months by the government so what tends to happen is um so when it started in october 2021 they confirm funding for six months from october to the end of the financial year and then it's just removed it's been um renewed sort of intermittently every six months 2023-24 financial year the first year where they've given a full year's commitment in advance um, and one of the things that we do is we use the grant to provide um, free school meal vouchers for children um, who are eligible for free school meals. Um, they're issued through schools during the holidays. Um, so we issue around 12,800 to school aged children and about 1,800 every every holiday to children in, um, who are in children's centres. And the vouchers, depending on the funding allocation, are usually around 10 pounds, 10 to 15 pounds per week of holiday. Um, we supply them through uh, an, a company called Eden Red and essentially what we do is schools are able to access a portal and draw down vouchers from that portal for children who are eligible for physical meals in their schools. Um, they can be issued electronically via email to parents or they can be issued in hard copy printed out and actually sort of given, um, given to parents. And what we noticed since October 2021, over a period of time, the, the vouchers actually time out after three months. When you do get this voucher, you can take it into a supermarket and use it to buy buy food and, and buy goods and services from, from the supermarket. But a fair chunk of vouchers um, since October 2021 have timed out after three months. So the money effectively comes back to the council. And what we're trying to do is really understand the reasons why um, why families whose children are eligible for free school meals are receiving these vouchers and actually not cashing them in. Um, so we're trying to get data um, from from schools and and from the sort of service supply Eden Red to see if there's a trend with a higher number of you know um, children in particular schools and things like that. We do publicise it and we have publicised it to schools every time we issue vouchers um, that you know that um they're, they're available for drawdown but, but the reason i'm coming to this forum is just to explain that um we're investigating trying to investigate some of the barriers that might be there why you know in terms of why some families might not draw down on these vouchers and just to use this as a forum to publicize it to families as well because i know a lot of the a lot of the representatives here deal with families um and we're trying to maximize um making people aware of these vouchers like I say, we are trying to understand the reasons why why um, why people might not want to use what is effectively, you know, vouchers that they can spend in supermarkets quite easily. Um, some of it might be to do with the actual data that schools hold. So if they if they're issuing vouchers to email addresses, as simple as a parent having changed their email address and things like that. So we do we're working around that. Um, but I just wanted to talk briefly about about the, the fact that the vouchers are there. Uh, can, can I ask really, a question? What, the, what does the voucher look like? I know that sounds like a really silly question, but um, is it, it's, it, it's it's issued electronically, so I think it's literally like an electric voucher. It might be a serial number and, and things like that, which can you be used in a supermarket, or it can be just printed out and given to a parent. And it can um, be used in any supermarket. It's not specific to a particular brand. 
I think it's actually in 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 Sainsbury's, but I can check. Okay. So yeah. that would probably be a reason why some parents are not using it because they may not have that supermarket near them, or Sainsbury is a more expensive supermarket than perhaps a lot of the parents are currently doing their shopping in. Yeah, I mean, I can check. I can check if it's limited. I mean, that's one of the things that I can actually check with Eden Red as well. But okay. Um, and I suppose one of one of the issues where I've because because I've just mentioned this, the grant was always seen as temporary, so it was always issued for six months and then re renewed quite at quite short notice by the government. So in terms of in terms of the actual setup to investigate why we um, why we have quite a high turnover of unredeemed vouchers, we're we're doing it now because the funding is confirmed for a year and it and it seems in terms of you know the, the noise the government are making it might be renewed for the next financial year as well um so hence put trying to sort of really investigate it and put in place processes where we try and um increase the uptake of vouchers or, or decrease you know the, the number of vouchers that go unredeemed really and and these vouchers have actually been issued to the families so it's not that the school i mean is it an is it a issue with the school not having the capacity to do the admin required or is it that these families have actually received the voucher and then are not spending the voucher they're actual vouchers that have been issued right and then they're timing out so the parents have have received the voucher either electronically or in or in paper mm. format um and the, and and the schools are supporting this they're not sort of coming back and saying we we haven't got the you know the admin resource to actually issue the vouchers or anything like that the schools are being really supportive mm. it's just understanding those those reasons and and there might be something as simple as someone doesn't want feel that they need the voucher or something like that but i'd imagine those those sort of reasons are quite low really so getting behind and doing and and through through Laura and, and and through the Hackney Education Director, we need to do a piece of work where we actually get behind the reasons a bit more. See if there's particular schools who might not emphasise that the vouchers are available, or, or perhaps more support is needed. And that sort of thing. Thanks, Sajid. Yeah, I mean, we um, also as part of the HSF Household Support Fund, we've been. Um, distributing vouchers by a different system. It's not Eden Red, it's a different um, portal. But um, I think, yeah, the digital access issue is quite important. Um, people who aren't necessarily sort of that savvy with, you know, um, with emails and that sort of thing, I think they're quite vulnerable to missing out on things. Um, do you do you know, Saji, sort of like what the voucher this might already be hard, but like what the voucher looks like and what it would look like in someone's inbox and like where the email would come from because with the vouchers we've been distributing we found that sort of it doesn't it doesn't sort of say hackney council or anything like that on it because it's coming from the sort of third party supplier and some of the residents just sort of don't clock what it is and actually it yeah can almost look a bit sort of fraudulent even though it's totally legitimate uh, and in junk email, we've yeah. we've issued a few vouchers, and they've gone into people's yeah. junk mailboxes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. That's interesting. It might, might be worth looking into, like literally, what the email or the text or whatever it is looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Get schools to show that to the family. Like this is what it's going to look like when it pops up in your inbox. Um, yeah. Just a thought. We can look into that. Thank you. That's really helpful. Cool. Does anyone else have any questions for Sajid? I think you need to uh, join another meeting, don't you, Sajid? But does anyone get any yeah. questions before he has to go? No. But if, anyone, if anyone else has got any feedback, um, I can just share my email address here and I'd, I'd, I'd welcome thoughts or, or, or any sort of helpful ideas. Cool. Batia, did you want to come in? There's a couple of comments in the chat as well. Um, but did, you, did you want to come in and, and say something, Batia? You're on mute if you're talking, Basia. I know you put your hand up. Sorry, child minding at the same time. Um, I've put the comments in the chat about the struggle, even if you are email savvy, mm -hmm. actually turning the voucher into something that works in the supermarket. There was a patch where Sainsbury's, um, where the all the other supermarkets were refusing vouchers. 
and I actually physically went round the supermarkets to discover that the the certainly the energy vouchers um, mm -hmm. Sainsbury's was the only supermarket that was very friendly to accepting them the other supermarkets right. were going no we don't do that and then of course the parents really embarrassed that they're mm. trying to use this voucher and um, for whatever reason there's a barrier there mm. sounds okay. like perhaps a lack of understanding yeah in multiple different points then along the along the chain if you see what i mean okay um, great so Jean, have you have you got any um i'm just thinking about how people on the call might be able to speak to residents they're working with about it have you got any sort of um i don't know like standard blurb that you use to like explain the vouchers and how they work and that sort of thing yeah, I can send that through to you, John, and then if you can circulate okay. that from us, that'd be really, really helpful. Yeah, brilliant. We'll do. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Oh. Felicity, did you want to come in? Yes, I just want to, wanted to say very quickly that a lot of people are afraid of fraud at the moment because people are, um, fraudsters are getting into people's emails, WhatsApp yeah. messages and everything. So a lot of the parents might see it and just ignore it because they don't know if opening it up is going to open up a can of worms. So if there's some way of um, telling the parents in advance that expect it on this date or something like that, maybe even if the schools tell them, you could last day of school, expect the voucher. I think more of the parents would be want to open it up and use it and, and not be afraid. Yeah, I think that's no, it's really happened important. to me, so I've ignored it, um, not knowing that it was valuable. So, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Felicia. That's a really, really good point. Um, do you need to go to Jade or can yeah. you take Yeah, I do need to go. Sorry, I okay. had done a meeting. Oh, thanks, thanks, everyone. Fine. Thanks for listening. Right, thanks take for care. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. Great. Um, Right, we're going to move on to our next speaker. Um, hi, Nick. Um, Nick's here from Shelter. Um, and yeah, please uh, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being on. Um, I I oh, you're really quiet. Yeah. But very unstable. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really struggling to hear you, actually. It's really, really faint. I don't know if it's the same for everyone else. I can't hear anything at all. Yeah. No, Sorry, Nick, it's still really, really faint. There is, the there is the option to join via your mobile, but I know it's, it's a bit of a faff, but um, just for the audio, it might be better. Would you be able, do you reckon you'd be able to join by your mobile, Nick, or do you, reckon, or do you think you'd be able to sort it out the laptop? Can you hear me, Nick? Yeah. I can see you're speaking, but I, I literally um, can't hear anything. Yeah, I, I like, I'm not sure it's uh, going to work with your mic. Um, it's, it's really, really quiet. Oh, maybe he's going to come back on his mobile.
if not we're opening up the floor so <laughs> get ready with something to share <laughs> We've got Martin on the call from the comms team. Hi, Martin. I don't know if you're sort of listening in the background, but um, I wondered if you were able to share anything about how the work on the um, helper hand guide is going, because I know you've been working on updating that. I don't know if you have anything to share on sort of progress with that. Uh, yeah, thanks, John. Um, so I'm still very much at the phase, just sort of um, kind of collecting feedback on previous issues, um, making notes in all these sessions. But it's been really useful um, just hearing what people have had to say about previous issues, but also just um, the kind of new things that that people have been working on and bringing to the table. So, so yeah, rest rest assured, all that has been noted. Um, uh, Char, I think maybe he's here. One second, sorry. Yeah, Charles um, very usefully sent me um, uh, a kind of one page sort of PDF that um, uh, Hackney Volunteer Centre had put together. They basically sort of looked at the, the previous guide and um, put together kind of like a, a one page sort of document. They kind of picked out what they thought was kind of the most useful advice and information and, and put it onto like one side um so i was thinking maybe i mean just just an idea and maybe going forward we might even create some kind of kind of a template document that different groups could kind of use if you know not that you know the guide is going to be you know super long or anything but just something that might be handy so that people can tailor it to to whatever kind of information they think is kind of most useful for their own community or audience um so that's so, so one idea we might try out yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Um, yeah, Charlie, did you want to come in? Yeah, Sorry, actually, quickly, before you do, just for context, everyone, um, I realized I didn't really explain what I was talking about, but um, lots of you have probably already seen it, but I'll, I'll put it in the chat. This is the help at hand guide that the council produces on cost of living support. So I think the one I'm putting in the chat is the second edition, and Martin is working on um, the third and understanding sort of how to um, max, you know, maximize its impact and understand from those who use it how it can best be formatted and communicated. Um, so that's what I was <laughs> talking about before I launched in there. I'm just sorry, Charlie. I'm just trying to see if Nick has actually rejoined. I can't see him, but someone shout if I've missed it. Um, but yeah, did you want to come in, Charlie? Oh, just to say that, yeah, Martin, a couple of groups do this in terms of they also do it with the information for John's newsletter. They'll, um, I can see Nick's joining now, but I'll just quickly finish the point. Um, basically, yeah, so a lot of people adapt it for the groups that they work with. So, yeah, a format like that would be, I'm sure lots of groups would welcome that. Um, also, um, I think I did send you the details, Martin. I know I spoke to some colleagues in the mental health services, and they were really keen that I think their details were included in the first guide, but weren't in the second, but they thought it was really helpful to have that information. Uh, accessible to people so if anyone did need to access community mental health services they could see some of the route through great thanks charlie um nick hi hello can you hear me now yes we can right. Fantastic. Let me, i was in a dodgy internet room i don't know if the cable was a bit um dodgy but yeah sorry about that that was that's all right no worries um, yeah, yeah, no problem I've got a little, I've got some slides um, that I can share um, afterwards or I can um, distribute because there's some details on there about our service. So I'm just going to use them as sort of background. Um, I haven't used Google much, but I think I uh, should be able to do this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to. It's not letting me share the PowerPoint. Uh, it's got yeah. over wind. It's got over. You can, if you want to send it to me, I can. I can yeah. share. Helpful. Yeah, it's, it's the little icon at the bottom with the box and the arrow in it. Um, yeah, but it's not giving uh, PowerPoint as an option. Uh, I usually go on. Uh, I just click that. But uh, 
button at the bottom and then click your entire screen. Oh, yeah, it'll just, yeah, it'll just show your entire screen, then you just obviously move on to the right tab. I've got it now. Right, can you see that? Yep, yeah, we've got it. Excellent. Right, and get in there. Um, yeah. So sorry, everyone. Um, so yes, I'm Nick Brown. Um, I'm one of our team leaders here within Shelter. Um, I'm one of seven team leaders um, within our London hub. Um, and between us, we cover our teams cover the vast majority of London. Um, but obviously, I'm here as the Hackney team leader. Um, I think my colleague Tracy is also here. She, um, she's one of our housing rights workers um, within our team. Um, so just a little brief bit about our London hub-wide services. Um, the core of our work is our housing advice, support and guidance. Um, so this um, is still co um, currently delivered quite remotely but we are now got quite a few outreaches within our london boroughs um within hackney at the moment in the last six months or so we started to um a bit longer maybe sort of get our outreach is going a lot more so as it stands at the minute we've got um two outreaches within children's centers within the borough which tracy tracy runs um they're delivered once a month um, and we've got one in the Woodby Downs Children's Centre um, and we've got one in the Daubeny Children's Centre. Um, we chose those two uh, particularly because it covers sort of it's, um, the north part of the borough and um, that sort of east side, I guess. But also Woodbury Downs um, is an area where we found we're getting a lot of sort of cases from there's a lot of temporary accommodation down that seven sisters road so um we specifically chosen that within hackney we have a more um wrap around hackney family service which is run by another team leader um so these these would be more complex cases where housing is an issue but there's all sorts of other things going on there and um, so there will be families um with children with additional needs and um, there might be domestic abuse within the family no recourse to public funds so they're more a family support service like a wraparound service where you know housing is just one of like the things that is going on with that family um within the advice teams that i run housing is our main sort of it, it's the main um issue that someone might have um obviously shelter we have a legal team within shelter we have a dedicated hackney team and um, we've got two solicitors in our hackney team um which legally aid it's funded by legal aid and um, so there's eligibility criteria for that um but um they can take on cases where advocacy from our caseworkers has been exhausted or a lot of the time if we've just like been ignored or not got anywhere our legal team can look at um yeah those actions that can be taken through the courts um particularly disrepair but also possession action and legal challenges to local authority under homelessness applications um we have a resilient service as well which um we offer across london with that hackney clients can tap into um these will be mainly um single people um but they will um have significant needs whether health needs um mental health particularly adult social care needs um and we have our diy skills advisor um who um yeah it's a great service that we can help people sort of um get when they've got a new property or they've got small diy issues within the property where you know it's not a landlord issue and the landlord's probably not going to fix it i.e fitting of cur curtain rails our diy skills advisor not just comes around and does that work they upskill um you know the tenant on that bit so they can do it those, themselves um and then 
something else that we've added to our recent work which is part of our community work is around workshops um so we we provide aware, awareness workshops for professionals and um, so it might be useful within this group um we can offer that to charities grassroots charities and other organizations who don't really have like training budgets so we at the minute we've got uh, workshops um that we can run on disrepair overcrowding um homelessness applications possession actions um particularly in the in the private rented sector um and we've got what which includes like what to look out for in terms of notices that landlords can serve um so that's a brief bit about our hub services um um, Nick, can I just ask you a question? Yes. In, how do people access? So, say for example, someone wanted to access the DIY skills advisor. How, how they would need to come into one of the London Hub services and register with you, or how, how does that work in sense? I'm just thinking. I I, I I partly manage the steps team who work with homeless clients and lots of them do get housed and many of them don't have those those skills and would massively benefit from some of that support so i'm just wondering how's the best way to get them linked in yeah i mean i've got i've got a bit about referrals into our service but a lot of the referrals the dicer takes are via our casework team but they can take um direct referrals i know solace um um you know domestic abuse charity of referring to the dice scheme so um there is direct referral routes for that um i can i've got my details and our sort of referral routes on another slide so so okay. we'll, sh we'll share all this um right, so uh, next slide so this is um so unfortunately you know we've had to sort of um days gone by we we used to have a drop-in service in our office in dalston and we used to open the doors and everyone would you know they could come in i think three times a week to speak to our um advisors um covid obviously initially put a uh, put the stop to that but also we you know as an organization we've had to look at how that um a is is it really helping clients with that mass amount of um sort of interviews we're getting like quantity over quality and be um you know the well-being of of our workers taking on those amount of work so we we now have what we call intentional case work so we take cases on that fit into the work that we want to do and into our community priorities um and again this will be on the slides but we will when we're taking referrals within our hub we will only take sort of referrals that meet these specific criteria. um obviously homeless applications um is the core of um the work that shelter have always done um we we always encourage people to to make that application in the first instance um where they can obviously if there's additional needs we'll have a we'll we we'll can take those on um but but so we particularly look at then how that application is dealt with by the local authorities um so we will we will get involved if um families or people have been approached as homeless and um they're not sure of what's happened on the day they're the what we call like gate kept by local authorities so we will um where we can sort of advocate for uh, people um their you know their rights when it comes to as a homeless person what to expect from the local authority um you know we examples where um people are told to come back when notices when you when the bailiffs those kind of things local connection things um so um you know and we'll take referrals for dec negative decisions that are made by the council under the homelessness duties so if someone has got a non-priority need decision under the homelessness duties that they don't agree with or they're found intentionally homeless we look at the merits to challenging that decision and if need be help them with a 202 review or refer on to our legal services um 
so this is the core of the work that we've always done it's not hackney specific it's just this is the core of the work that we do but it's within our hackney team if that makes sense um and just other bits around there, you know, disrepair and ASB, we've had to cut down on that a little bit before we would take on disrepair cases and help them with complaints um, where it was maybe a little low level complaint. But in fact, now that you know, legal aid, we can only really get it for significant risk of harm to the tenant. We can only take on like severe sort of disrepair and ASB claims um, cases under that. Um, and I guess rent arrear and possession action, this is probably a bit more relevant to this group. This is sort of, again, trying to prevent people from becoming homeless, helping them, um, sadly, particularly with rent arrears, um, ways that we can support uh, people with rent arrears, uh, payment plans, looking at local welfare grants, assisting people into applying for those grants, whether DHPs or prevention funds and a whole host of other charitable grants that we can help people with. Um, there's a bit of there about housing register bits. Um, and one that unfortunately we see quite a lot of coming through is no recourse to public funds, uh, families who, you know, are probably at the, they're at the most risk of harm uh, due to their status. Um, we we will challenge again um support under section 17 failure to support under section 17 but we we usually refer that out to specialist um solicitors community law solicitors but one thing that we're we're um just want to be aware of is is those families who af you know they may get the recourse reattached to their um leave so they have a change of circumstances and they can get recourse to public funds that sort of transition period across from being supported by Section 17 into mainstream sort of homelessness housing, um, we can support with that. Um, is there any questions on that bit at all? I know I just ran through that quite quickly. I think there was a question in, in the that? chat from... Um, uh, sorry, I can't see the it chat. Been answered, but, um, yeah, around the current level of homelessness uh, and figures for the amount of rough sleepers so sort of, that's a bit different to the info on the slide but yeah i didn't know if you had that okay um we definitely we have a we have a we have a wide, wide range of research and policy within shelter we can get those figures those those figures are available um on gov.uk website they're produced um quarterly maybe even i think they've got live homelessness tables on there so they are available um their councils have to report them back um i was just let me just i was gonna just uh there's the community priorities that um we're looking at so um we'll go too much into this but we're basically we have um five working groups so as an organization we do cover um all of london with our advice service but we have five specific boroughs that we're concentrating on and looking at um issues well here are local issues but just generic issues that we're finding within these boroughs and we chose hackney waltham forest newham rbkc and westminster because traditionally we have had sort of our services in that area um so Hackney, Waltham Forest and Newham is our sort of East London priority and we we do have a Westminster prevention team that we've traditionally had. Um, I've touched on these a little bit but um, we local authority sort of bad practice, an example of this at the moment is, um, I mean bad practice is probably a bit of a harsh word but we're, we're looking at, um, we've got a project at the minute regarding temporary accommodation within, within Hackney um, so we've identified some um, accommodation, some hostels where we've, through our case where, where we're getting referrals for residents in these hostels who are have reporting issues with the hostels. So back in the day, we would have probably taken every single case on of those and just advised them individually. But now we're looking at how we can best approach this with more of a more of a group um of families working with communities um organizations who are working with those families but also um 
trying to approach it with the local authority that you know we're, that is not sort of a, a full-on attack of local authorities because we know the pressures they're under including the temporary accommodation team so it's about sort of trying to work together with those families to come up with the best approach regarding that so we've got a project on at the moment regarding temporary accommodation um and we've set up temporary accommodation action group within hackney which um i can talk about out in a moment because i've got a slide um, for that um just some recent figures and again it'd be worth reading these links this first link um is an excellent blog by one of our researchers about um how bad it is across um you know the england in terms of um privately renting and lha rates um but I mean, this is a bit of a doom slide, but this is just sets out, you know, our research at the minute of how it how it's been looking. Um, you know, we've had LHA rates frozen since 2020, and but rents have risen sharply in that time. And at the moment, we believe there's about 1.8 million renters who rely on LHA. LHA, um, and the data in these two links shows that the vast majority of properties are unaffordable. I think in London, um, I think there was about 5% of two bedroom properties that were affordable for people on LHA. Um, and last year, you know, across England, fewer than one in five properties were under LHA rates. Um, so that's just, you know, how, how it's looking at the moment in terms of LHA. And yeah, there's two good links there about um, those, how it's looking. Um, I was going to chat about the renters reform bill. I don't know, John, if I've got time just to briefly have a chat about this. Um, I know it's 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 not. I mean, it it's not in place yet. But um, this is just, I guess, um, things that um, will be coming in place to try and help renters. Um, so you've probably, or you may have heard that the renters reform bill was announced um in may so this is this is quite a big bill um that um you know is hopefully going to shake up the private rented market um and the biggest thing out of that was about abolishing section 21 um which i'm sure we all know is the the most used notice within the private rented sector um the landlord doesn't have to give a reason to to give the notice and as long as um he's you know the landlord has done certain things before the notice is served then um there's very little defense to a section 21 so they first announced this in 2019 it went a bit quiet until 2022 and finally the bill was introduced in 2023 um and like i say it's going to hopefully scrap section 21 by abolishing assured shorthold tenancies so most private renters now uh, are on assured shorthold tenancies these are the standard tenancies that people receive um if and when this bill becomes law there will no longer be assured shorthold tenancies and um, tenants uh, new tenancies will be fixed term um, assured tenancies um and they'll start off as just a periodic tenancy so there'll be no fixed term they'll just start as rolling tenancies um and there's going to be loads of new grounds introduced um you know with uh, that landlords can use um so there's there's a few things there with the landlord signing up to the landlord portals uh, publicly ac accessible so uh, tenants can see can see um the properties they can see if the landlord's um, a good landlord um there's going to be a new ombudsman for the private rented sector so a new way of complaining um about conditions within the private sector um and there's going to be things regarding um people being allowed pets within tenancies um because we know that a lot of people are denied sort of um the opportunities to have animals within tenancies um and just a couple of things that we what think what about children because i see that a lot now where it says no children or no well, you know, no benefits or <laughs> yeah and this is um this is one thing that unfortunately the 
the um the bill didn't go quite far enough which we were we you know there's still a chance to change that through our campaigning but shelter won two cases a few years ago now where against dss discrimination in the county court um it was you know deemed that it was unlawful to discriminate um fortunately they were only county court sort of judgments um decisions so they're not legally binding because it's obviously the lowest court um we were hoping that would be that would come into the this new bill but it hasn't which um it's quite disappointing for us um which you know we've got some campaigns that hopefully people can join and and um see if we can change that but there, there's going to be some tricky grounds regarding antisocial behaviour, which we're concerned around. Um, they, you know, the the wording is there that antisocial behaviour can include um, things that are capable of causing nuisance or annoyance. So that's quite a low low threshold. Um, so we're interested to see how that's going to look, how, if that's going to change throughout the bill, because um, a lot of things can be capable of causing nuisance or annoyance. So. We're concerned about that. Um, the you know there is a there is a new um, ground that landlords can use to attempt to evict a tenant claiming they want to sell or move into the property, but that only lasts for three months after vacant possession. The landlord can relet the property if they want to. So we feel like that might get abused a little bit. So um, a few things to look out with the renters reform bill and i've got a link to our campaign around that as well that i'll put in this chat that um we're looking for people to sign up for our petitions around around the, that um and i think this is the last slide so i'll stop with it in a minute but this is just a bit about um our lived experience groups within um within shelter so we are trying to with everything that we do, our advice services, our um, you know, our community work, we want to include um, our um, the people we work with within everything we do. We have a dedicated lived experience team within um, shelter um, to help us improve and co-produce things. Um, one thing that we're looking at um, more representation on is our temporary accommodation action groups. So these are set up with stakeholders within temporary accommodation. So obviously the residents themselves, the landlords, support groups, um, agencies, the local authority to try and influence and guide decision making regarding temporary accommodation. So we are looking for, um, you know, um, tenants who are living in temporary accommodation who feel confident enough and we we'll, we provide support around that but feel confident enough to sit on these temporary accommodation panels and really try and um create some change around that um if anyone wants to contact me a bit about there's a there's a lot more around our tags i'm happy to speak a bit more about our tag groups if anyone wants to contact me after that after this um and the last slide um probably can be sh well this needs to be shared really um a lot of work we can do for with professionals so organizations can access support so we don't just provide support for um sort of uh, tenants um uh, professionals can contact us uh, obviously on our website there's a lot of information on our website um but we have a helpline for and web chat for professionals who um you know may have a may have a family and they they want to advise the family best um they can contact our NHAS and get some more information on how they can provide the best sort of advice to their um yeah to their clients so um yeah that is the end of the slides um i under there's a lot there obviously um and i'm happy to yeah talk about those slides we've got enough time and i know I waffled on a bit there, but um, yeah, and, you know, I'm happy to talk about you know any awareness workshops that we can run for yourself and staff within your organisation. So either catch me after this or drop me an email. I'm happy with that. Amazing, thanks, Nick. Um, 
that was really really useful when those uh the lived experience panel sound like a really good initiative um bringing people in who have actually yeah obviously got that experience of being in temporary accommodation or experiencing homelessness um does anyone have any um questions for nick um either around sort of shelters services or yeah the, the legislation that's going to be uh coming into action uh councillor charleston did you want to come in i know you put a question in the yeah, chat well. yeah that's what i'd like to ask um i've got someone a van vulnerable adult who's um uh in his 50s and found himself um homeless but he's very not able to advocate for himself so i'm just wondering is it possible to set up online meetings or oh i see the 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 yeah someone's put an answer in there the the web chat so maybe that's where i start is it i'm just wondering about the best way the best way to sort of you know access services really and in terms of um getting advice from shelter um i mean we um we we, we can operate i mean we we can put appointments based on whatever works for the um the client really we have we have a face-to-face -face appointments if need be at our hackney hub we can do like um conference calls with a support worker um with with the clients so yeah i mean it i've i can you know if if it's a referral that you feel like you you to make the the details we can pass those on and we can we can facilitate it as best as the the client wants wants it really um yeah thanks nick um anyone else have any other questions for nick or reflections on sort of working with people who are at risk of homelessness um mariana did you want to come in yeah thank you nikki it's really interesting and i'm from the public health team and i'd like to know because we are uh, doing a health needs assessment around tobacco in one of the reports the ash which is an organization uh, for smoke cessation uh, they advise some work with housing associations about smoke cessation to reduce inequalities is there any work uh, linked to shelter in relation to smoke cessation uh no not as far as i know i mean we're obviously we're predominantly housing um advocacy um so no i don't there's no work we do around smoking stop smoking no thank you i was going to actually ask a question unless someone else has got unless anyone else wants to come in uh, Pastor charleston did you want to yes sorry. <laughs> sorry but um this this is like 90 percent of our casework as counselors so it's pretty major really i mean one of the problems that we have is that people who want to transfer you know they find that they they register on these home swapper websites and stuff um and and that no one wants to come to their properties so they get a match and then the person says no we don't want to come to because most of them are king's mead estate or you know an estate that people don't want to live live on and um there seems to be no other options you know i mean what how 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 can i best advise um residents in that position thank you um yeah i mean it's very tricky um mutual exchange is um yeah a lot of the time there's a reason someone wants to move from their property and that will might be because there's maybe asb on their block um you know and if they want to transfer with someone coming in you know they they're probably going to witness that kind of thing when they turn up to the block so it, if they are it's very tricky it would depend on why you know the person wanted to move at the end of the day um we put we know we we predominantly support people in those situations where there's a there's going to be a threat of homelessness and that could be where there's where the asb is severe or there's 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 really bad disrepair 
it's tricky. We, if someone just fa- not fancies, it, but wants to get onto the mutual exchange scheme, and there's no threat of homelessness, it's um, it's not something we necessarily would get involved in. But I mean, it is it is really tricky because you know you you will have someone who maybe the property is in disrepair, for example, and they're a bit fed up. Um, and they want a mutual exchange, but when someone comes to have a look at their property, they have noticed the 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 you the disappear. So it does really depend what the reason is that you know the tenant wants to move. Um, you know, I mean, I'm happy to have a chat if there's a specific one um, at a later date. But um, yeah, it would really depend on the case by case basis, I guess. Matt, yeah, did you want to come in? Or not? I think you're on mute if you're trying to talk. Um, but I think you also put. Um, the- I put okay. something in the chat because yeah. um, um, my remit is much wider than Hackney, and um, I've got a family with a newborn who's in uh, Naiku. You know the in it's in nat- it natal support, and they're coming out to being evicted. And I just wondered. I know you said you focus on those boroughs, but then would Shelter look at the next door borough? Would they be able to help this family? They're in Tower Hamlets. Yeah, so we have a we do have a wider star team who cover um, the rest of the other boroughs. So we do uh-huh. we, do, we yeah. do cover Tower Hamlets with our other service. Um, so Jess, can you zap a contact so that I can speak to a specific person? Yeah, I'm just thinking what the best way of getting it. Do you want, I can put it in this chat. Um, I can't get from the chat to the... I'm sorry, I'm on, not on my own device. <laughs> okay. Can you email it afterwards? Is there a way, John, to get it? Yeah, across? I can, Thank I you. Can, um, put, uh, if, if I get some bits together after this, yeah. um, if John, you want to circulate it, that yeah. useful. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, I'll put it all in the newsletter and make sure you get that, Matthew. Yeah. Right. Um, just looking in the chat to see if there's any more questions. Um, Missy, was that a question for Nick in the chat about the Housing Association? Yes, it, it, it is because most housing associations, I believe, have only worked through recommendation and signposting. So if a family like Councillor Charlton was saying, uh, it's not mainly for antisocial behaviour, but just the family has gone bigger. But there's nothing that the council can find them, and they come to you. Would you recommend them to a housing association for a bigger property, since some of them seem to have more accommodation than the council? Yeah, I think it's been partially answered in the chat. Um, um, a lot of um, housing associations now allocate most of their properties through local councils' waiting list. There's um a large there'll be percentages they offer to local authorities but m- most of them yeah are, are advertised on mm-hmm. waiting lists um there i'd be interested to know which housing associations do direct we, there's probably a piece of work um for us to do around that but off the top of my head i don't know which ones you can apply to direct anymore that's it's t- been tightened up a lot um, I just did that. That's the problem. You can't IDS. go direct to them. Sorry. IDS take not will not. take direct applications for families only. Currently, um, places for people will, but that's way outside Hackney. They're very, very few in Hackney, um, and there, that was about a month's research. Alicia, did you want to come back on that? No. No, thank you. Uh, Bassi, you still got your hand up. I don't know if you wanted to come back in. No, sorry, having trouble with my buttons. But right, IDS no definitely are happy to take family applications at the moment. I mean, it's a window. I don't know how soon the window will close, but I know they will take direct applications. So that's useful for people in Hackney. Brilliant. Thank you, Bassi. That's really good to know. Um, any other questions for Nick? We've got to five o'clock. Um, 
at this point we usually when the presentations are finished we usually um open up the floor really for anyone to um share any insights they've got from the work they're doing with residents or questions they might have for the council or or any of the other people on the call it's just an opportunity really for people who are obviously working on the front line with residents to um have a sort of fairly informal and open discussion so um Bastia, did you want to come in um i put a question in the chat earlier open to anyone um, I had a, a service user that needed emergency one-off food help and I applied to the money hub and got a blanket no, not even, I mean I, what I would have looked for was at least a referral to a source of immediate food for this person and I, I just came up with a blank and I'm wondering if anybody has any sort of insight into those kind of situations. Oh, Kate is okay. suggesting trying to. Okay. Yeah. I, I, when I say something, I think that the job centre would be a useful place. They are issue vouchers as yeah. well. Oh, so okay. if the person cannot get a loan, they are on any sort of universal credit or that hasn't come through or something like that, the um, job centres would give them a letter straight away to find a food bank. <laughs> And oh. that, yeah, some food banks as well it depends on how much food support was needed but some some food banks also operate on a walk-in basis and don't need a voucher referral it does say on the here to help booklet which ones in the in the one that should say which ones need referrals or not referrals um if it was also a one-off emergency it depends what kind of support is it was necessary but yeah, there are. Yeah, like I said, there are some supports happening. If it was, or if it was a hot meal that we needed, there are lots of organized. There are lots of places you can reach out to in the borough that do that too. That's also um, on the uh, on the information here to help booklet. Oh, hang on. Hey, did you want to come in? You're on mute. Okay, sorry, sorry, did you did you or you just ask me? Okay. So yeah, um children with voices have several food hubs across Hackney. Um the what the local one to, to, to us here is on Downham Road, but they also have them in some other locations, which I can send them to John if you don't know already. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. That's the telephone. Um are you still there, everybody? Yes. Yeah. Um so I can send you probably their locations. The other thing is that they, I think, have some sort of an emergency number. Getting volunteers to actually deliver is not that easy at the moment. Um, we people, but people can turn up without any sort of referral system um, to the, the food hub here, and that's open on a, a Monday and a Thursday here in uh, in uh, De Beauvoir. But if they can get here, it doesn't matter where they come from and all they're required to do is just put their name postcode and give a pound if they can give a pound and they would then will be given as much shopping as they kind of need so they just say to them how many in your family is it you alone or whatever uh so i can't re recommend them highly enough and it's it's they are so dedicated to what they do that if, the, if, if michelle daughterly knew that there was an issue and somebody needed something urgently she'd get in her car and she'd take it around do you want me That's, to send the information yeah, through? John? Yeah, I was going to say if you send that through, I can um, circulate that in a newsletter too. But yeah, that that sounds like it could be a really good option. Charlie, do you want to come in? It's also worth saying, um, Hackney Food Bank. You do need a voucher to access Hackney Food Bank, but they have every single every single hub has their mobile an individual number on um, on their kind of on the details on the page on the locations. And if it was a one-off emergency, you could call that number and explore that with them. They might say you need a voucher, but it, you could talk to them at least. The Money Hub might not be the; they wouldn't know that. But do you know what I mean? You could you could try that conversation if it was a one-off emergency in, in scenario. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, hopefully, that's helpful, Basia. Um, yeah, and I'll make sure that info goes out in the newsletter. Um, Anyone else got anything they want to um, 
ask the group or or share anything they've been working on or any ideas for future meetings please future um uh, iteration meeting anyone got any uh burning desire to present to the group or or want me to look into a particular council service or other organizations to come along and present um now's a chance to to ask that was out given to us that was out given to us not sure if that's what i want to come in or not yes yeah i'm going to go and okay i'm just going to put you on mute for this because we've got a bit of background noise oh sorry it's all right don't worry um if not we can wrap up a bit early um obviously this recording will go out um in the newsletter so um you can feel free to obviously to share that with your colleagues um and nick thanks very much again for uh presenting earlier that was that was really useful and um yeah if you can send me all of that uh info i can get it out of the newsletter um council charlton has asked uh whether as a counsellor, she can go on the shelter training. Um, it's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, maybe not, but I can find out maybe. Because <laughs> um, I know, because our, our, our shelter professional service, we have a different sort of service that provide training for, I guess, organisations that have training budgets, local authorities and things like that. So it might be a tentative no, but I could find out. Do you mind if I come back on that? Sorry. Um, it's just that they they give us briefings. They don't give us actual training on the, on the law because if you think about it, there's a conflict of interest there. Um, so you know we i mean we are approached by members of the public who want our advice but all we can do is go to officers and trust that you know they are going to do the right thing but we can't you know most of us are not housing experts by any means you know so and yet we deal with masses of housing casework so the council isn't going to give us training to make life hard for the council if you know what i mean that's why you know i think we do need this independent training i would certainly go attend it if i could thank you maybe if i um if, if it's all right to give your email address to nick council chancellor and then um he can get back to you on that if that's all right will do i'll i'll email after the meeting thank you perfect um yeah, any other questions or anything else um, people want to share or we can wrap up. Okay, all right, we'll draw it to a close, but thanks everyone for coming along. Hope that was all really useful. Um, Jenny's just joined. We're about to wrap up, Jenny. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to come in or if you're just listening in the background, but we're about to wrap I, up. I was just listening in. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't make the rest of the meeting. No, I'll right. pop recording back but nice to nice to see your faces anyway <laughs> okay <laughs> cool cheers jenny all right um we will wrap up then and uh yeah i'll obviously send that all the stuff out in the newsletter so look out for that and yeah do just ping me an email if you feel like you want to present about the work you're doing or you've got ideas for future sessions um so yeah feel free to get in touch and thanks everyone for coming bye guys Thank you, everyone. Thank you for letting me present. Take care, yes, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.